Serious, parents of Reddit, what was a legit reason why you didn't let your son daughter have that friend over go to her sleepover? A relatively new male friend of my 13 year old came over for the first time, and when I say come over, I mean climbed over a 6 foot cinder block privacy fence to surprise 13 year old with an engagement ring, plastic, and a plant, stolen from neighbor, full stop. She was then invited on his family's vacation, she did not go. Our romance is truly alive and well I see. He was a little kleptomaniac. He came over exactly three times to hang out. Each time something would go missing. No more visits. Found out recently he was recently charged with embezzlement at the company he used to work for. Good for him he evolved into embezzler instead of armed robber or petty thief. That is a hugely better way to go. I hated not letting the child sleep over. But that would have meant that my child would have wanted to sleep over at his house. His mother was living with a very abusive man who raised every single hair on my neck. This man taped off areas where my son's friend could walk and sit, ration food, etc. I was not about to let my son be in that environment. The friend started acting out from abuse. I had already talked to the school counselor about my suspicions and CPS was involved. It was hard to explain to a child of 8 why this friend couldn't come over. I was a situation that set off my early warning senses. We were staying at the house of the daughter of my in-law's friends. She had a 3 year old son. My daughter was 5. They played well together. But I got some weird vibes that told me that my daughter shouldn't be crashing in the living room in a sleeping bag. I had her sleep with my wife in the guest bed while I slept on the couch. I kept a close watch on the kids the rest of the evening. The next day as we were leaving. The 3 year old basically tackled my daughter, he was big, she was very small, and tried to mount and hump her on the floor. I extracted her and told him that wasn't appropriate. My daughter laughed it off as him trying to wrestle with her. Once in the car I told my wife under no circumstances would our daughter ever be allowed back in that house, ever. She agreed. We later learned that the then boyfriend of the woman with the son used to let the boy watch hardcore pee with him. Mum found out when CPS got involved stopped my daughter staying at her friend's house when I found out the friend's mum was an alcoholic who was going out every night to the pub and bringing random guys home for the D. Happened every time she slept there and the mum didn't know the guys names half the time. My parents went to drop off my stuff at a friend's house because I wanted to spend a the night. They walked in, and my dad said nope you're coming home. She had two brothers, one was super nice, one was very touchy. Her dad then threatened my dad and said he can't take her child out of his home without his permission. My dad being 6 feet 3 and a large dude got in his face. Her dad looked like a string bean and said he was taking me home right now. My dad told me later he had a really bad gut feeling something bad would have happened if I stayed. Her touchy brother is in jail now, for what I'm not even sure. When I was in middle school my friend was a bit goth and tough looking. I was a good kid and my parents knew it. My mom didn't want me hanging out with my friend because she thought she would be a bad influence on me. I told my mom that wouldn't happen and that I would be a good influence on her. My mom said okay. My friend was not bad in any way. She just liked goth clothes. Turned out she was a good student and she lived in a mansion and was super nice. We went to Six Flags Fright Feast and she got me over my fear of throwing up on a roller coaster. Leslie, you were a really good friend and your dogs were super cute. I hope you are happy in life. I'm so glad this one had a happy ending. Completely disrespectful to our home. After multiple times telling them not to- My daughter is 6, she's 12, we live in the same complex. She'd constantly leave trash all outside, on our stairs, inside our couch, floor to where the baby can get, makeup paint all over our carpets. She didn't care. Last and final sleepover, she invited a kid we didn't know to stay with her too. I felt bad because the girl was younger, until it was 1am and they were blasting music, yelling, and dancing. We live on the second floor, told them to go to bed, 730am. Same exact thing. She started coming over first thing in the morning, staying until late at night. I told her if she was hungry, she had to go home and eat and come back. Two doors down, as we didn't have enough food to feed everyone my husband has been out of work, and we're really struggling. 
she wouldn't. Whatever snacks we had for our three kids were gone in a day. Come to find out, she wasn't allowed at home while her, her mom was at work, because her 24 year old BF was at home, and she's getting boobs so she didn't need to be home alone with him. So much wrong with that statement, but true. Just last week the mom sent her to another state for a bit. My daughter misses her, but it's been nice not having my place full of kids. She'd bring friends all the time, all day every single day and eating all the food we don't have. The father of one of my daughter's classmate, she was only in second grade, kept repeatedly telling my daughter to come spend the night over there. She told me about it so I made sure to catch him one day and he said in a very strange way oh, she's welcome to spend the night anytime and he won't look at me. Plus the way he looked at her just creeped me out. Mind you, he is a single father so there's no other adult in the house to monitor him. I don't even know how I would react to a grown man repeatedly asking my daughter that. I hope his kid is okay too. Sheesh these are sad. My mom wouldn't let me stay at a friend's house when I was a kid because she didn't like how messy their house was. Growing up there were certain friends whose house I wasn't allowed to stay at. I never knew why my dad wouldn't ever let me go certain friends homes until I got older. My dad was in law enforcement so he knew which of my friends had more dubious parents. One of my really good friends in elementary, his dad had a pretty sketchy history, and it turned out later his dad kidnapped someone and led the police on a wild chase in another state. Good old dad just keeping me safe. My oldest kiddo has an incredibly gentle soul and is very into ballet. He had one friend come over to a sleepover that I ultimately sent home after he made fun of my son for loving ballet and then smashed ants from my son's and farm in front of my son. I get that he was little, but man not letting anyone who makes my kid cry like that and doubt how awesome he is in my house again. I don't care how much this kid's mom needs a break. Nothing wrong with ballet. Heck my high school has a dance for athletes class and they still do a performance. It's a hobby which teaches agility and is good physical activity I'd assume. I never did crap like that and sure I can lift plenty of weights with the physical activity I do but I'm as graceful as a shopping cart carrying a refrigerator. My daughter was 5 at the time. There was this kid, son of a co-worker. Co-worker was cool. My daughter got along with this kid on the playground. So we decided to do the play date thing. The kid couldn't handle sharing his toys so he started biting. Biting is basically the kid equivalent of whipping your dong out at a chucky. Cheese. Which, ironically, is much less of a big deal if you do it while you are still a kid. So we were out of there. Co-worker apologized profusely and asked if we could have a do-over at our place. Figured. Not an issue because his toys weren't in play. Nap. Then he started biting because he wanted her toys. When I was little I became aware that biting was probably my most formidable weapon. I'm sure it's a phase we all have. I vividly remember how much more it hurt when my mother bit me lol. She never had to say anything before or after. Recently my nephew had his own biting phase, until his mother bit him in the same way mine did. Crap works. My parents always refused to let me go over to that friend's house. She could come to our house, but I couldn't go over there. I always threw a fit about it in the moment. We grew apart over the years. As an adult, I had to interact with her family through my job, in law enforcement. My parents never said why I couldn't go over there. They didn't want my kid mouth to tell everyone at school that Jean's parents were CUs as dealers and that their live-in uncle was a registered sex offender. I learned the truth as an adult and respect my parents for being gentle and giving white lies regarding the situation. I'm sure my dumbass kid self would have bluntly mentioned it to Jean and it would have hurt her. I'm sure she had it hard enough in that environment anyways. Not bad. And he could stay over. My brother was in the closet, but my parents knew and he wanted his friend to spend the night. My parents said yes, but they had to sleep in the living room. He then got pee off and it didn't happen. Nice try buddy, we've all been blocked by our parents. It's so infuriating at the time and then you grow up and it's like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Mmeo. Two different friends with moms that smoked M. One in 5th grade and one in 6th. They actually both lived with us at one point or another. The kid in 5th grade was a nice guy, a little hyper and kind of mischievous. 
but had a really good heart when you take him home environment into account. He ended up staying with us for a week when his mom lost the house they lived in, I think after that he went to live with a relative. I didn't see him again until we were adults and he just happened to come into my work. He's a bodybuilder now. My mom stopped letting me go over to his place long before he came to stay with us though. Apparently one time his mom just straight up asked my mom if she wanted to smoke some M with her. Which she declined and quickly got us the frick out of there. The kid in 6th grade was introduced to me through a mutual friend. I came home from a weekend at his place and told my mom about my time over there. She asked me a bunch of follow up questions. Ending with does it smell like they have cats I told her yes. And she asked but they don't have any cats. Do they and I said no. I didn't see any. She gave me a solemn look and said that I wasn't allowed to go there anymore. But he was allowed to stay over here. After a few years of us being friends his mother dropped him off at my place one night with no warning. He and I didn't know what was going on. But I know now that his mom had a heart to heart with mine. Saying that she knew she was going to be arrested soon. And that our house was the safest possible place for her son. As my mom was the only person she was even acquainted with that wasn't a drug addict. This kid and I had become extremely close over the years. And my mom loves him very much. So without blinking she agreed to take custody of him. So he became my adopted brother. Sort of. Flash forwards. A CPS agent is at our door with a custody release form. She tells my mom that my friend brother's dad has been cleared to take custody. My friend wants to live with his dad more than anything. So my mom tearfully gives up custody. I see him at school a week later. And he tells me he's been put in a foster home. He was never going to his dad's at all. It took years for him to believe that CPS had deceived my mother into giving up custody. And that we didn't just give him away. It makes me want to cry thinking about him feeling like we abandoned him. He graduated high school in the foster care system and joined the marines. I haven't seen him in 6 years. I miss my brother. I had a friend from school who was a year younger so I was like 10 he was 9 and I came over to his house and played some hockey outside. Then we got bored and we started tackling each other and rolling around on the grass. After that we went inside and watched hotel for dogs. Well the next day my friend comes over and says you can't come over anymore I say why not then he said my mom thinks you're gay. Then basically the friendship died that day. I'm 10 and I'm not gay like WTF his mom was a police officer too she should have known we were playing. That's awful. I didn't know it at the time, but my best friend growing up was gay. Gay wasn't even a thing that registered to me. Michael just liked to play dress up get makeup done with my sisters. Little weird but whatever. He is a cool dude. My parents older siblings however totally knew, and they couldn't have given less of a crap. I only found this out 15 plus years later but no one ever came to my birthday parties as a kid in elementary school. I had an abusive family life where I would come into school with a lot of unusual bruises and regularly I had dirty clothes and hair. I thought it was perfectly normal because that's all I knew. I was always welcome at other homes but no one would come to mine. A friend of mine's mother told after I had moved out and was on my own in college that she always worried about my home life and wouldn't let her daughter over because she was so concerned. It took a lot of time and therapy to come to terms with that. Not that she wouldn't let her daughter come over out of concern but that she didn't have enough concern to say anything about me. Your last sentence resonates with me so much. It's a very specific feeling of betrayal. I was the kid in this situation. I was 10 years old, and I had a very self-obsessed friend, but it was no biggie, until she started stealing from me, and then from my sister, and then from my parents. Each time she came, something was missing. When it was me, I blamed my sister. When it was my sister, she blamed me. We didn't really realize it was her until money that was around the house started disappearing. My mom did 1 plus 1 and told me to tell her she's not allowed to be my friend anymore. I was sad about it, but it was also kind of a relief. I dky but it felt very high maintenance to be friends with her. I was around 10 11 and I could feel like I was happier and had more freedom. Does that make sense? I had a gut feeling that something was just off about a young man that my son was friends with, but couldn't put my finger on it. I refused to let him stay over because of that gut feeling. Years later, it came out that he assaulted a mutual female friend in her sleep. As a parent I never had to make this decision. 
my child and I had coded responses with each other. I knew from my own experience that these situations can be very tough and your school friends sometimes try to pressure to do things you don't want to do, especially if they have their own agenda. Basically if my child said may I go do this, I knew she really wanted to and felt comfortable so my answer was yes unless we had family stuff to do. If she said can I I knew she felt uncomfortable or pressured into asking so I would have her back and say number. I always trusted my child first and gave her the power to communicate, learn to trust her own gut and be confident. We made up codes between the two of us for her entire growing up. It worked so well during her teenage years. If she was uncomfortable at a party or situation she would text me a certain phrase and I knew she wanted me to call her with a reason to leave. We also never had curfews. Each event was different we would talk about it and decide together what time she would be home. Now as a grown up she has thanked me a lot and said this was one of the best things I did for her growing up. She always felt like we were in it together. We were and she is turning out to be an amazing person. This was a very rewarding part of being a parent. Not her parent but my sister is 9 years younger than me. Wouldn't accept her ex-boyfriend. Not being toxic in the whole defensive act some big brothers do. I just didn't like the guy. He was super emo and I could just see some light in my sister going out. He was really possessive of her and whispering like freaking worm tongue in her ear all the time. Weird stuff now, not like whispering secret little jokes but whispering conversations. I assumed they were mocking me or my family. I ended up making a demand that he not be in the house if I was home. Not something I have ever dreamt of doing before or since. Turned out he was whispering super dark crap about suicide self-harm as well as subtly belittling and completely emotionally blackmailing her but she broke down and told my mum all about it thankfully they then broke up but he hung around trying to contact her for ages he'd be telling her that if she didn't go back to him that he'd hurt himself etc etc it took a while but it fizzled out she was back to herself in no time thanks to bejesus Fast forward 10 years, I'm on an A&E shift. I assess some poor girl who has addiction and mental health problems. She'd had a few suicide attempts in the last year. Lo and behold, who's her boyfriend? The same scrawny little bollocks. He refused to acknowledge my existence when I assessed her. He just sat there looking at her and grinned. Not smiling but bloody grinning. The whole time. Psychopath. This didn't happen to me but one time my cousins. 8 and 10 years old, wanted to have this older kid, just turned 18, over from their church to spend a night. The guy wasn't really weird at all and seemed nice and I'd hung out with him a lot but their mom just didn't feel right about it and said no. About 2 years later it came out that he had been molesting kids at another church he was going to and had gotten arrested. Crazy stuff. My kid is not allowed to go to his friend's house down the street. Too much police activity there, including a friend of that family arrested for selling drugs from there while visiting. No whoop. I have told him it's not a safe house, and his friend can come here but he can't go there. There are other reasons why I don't trust their judgment, but I figure the drug stuff is enough, right? Not parent, I was the kid. Used to be friends with this girl that I met at sporting events around 10 times a year and I would always want to hang out with her and spend a lot more time with her than I was ever allowed to. She gave my parents a really off vibe, and apparently used to ask really inappropriate questions. My parents wouldn't let me go to hers at all. A month ago, she was imprisoned for killing her ex-fiance, by beating him. Tying him to her car and dragging him before stabbing him multiple times and then setting his body on fire. She had help but she was the main one. Dodge a bullet there. Dad is a chain smoker and smokes in the house. We'll have my daughter's friends stay over. But we'll find an excuse to have her take a shower early on. Go to the park. Swimming. Etc. Our daughter can't stay there overnight. And even if she is there for a few hours she showers and changes clothes as soon as she gets home. Years ago we had new neighbors move in across the street that had a daughter that was a year younger than mine. They introduced her one day and suggested that we get the girls together to play over at our house. They had seen we had a swing set and trampoline. I just smiled and said oh yeah maybe we can do that. I had a bad feeling about them and their daughter so I kept my kid away from theirs and I'm glad I did. This girl who at the time was about 8 got found many times on the roof of their porch. Would go start the car. Climb all over the car. 
playing the street, which our street is pretty busy, she cussed like a sailor, and when she was about 10-11 gave a little neighbor girl of about 5 or 6 a cup of her pee to drink. I'm glad I listened to my gut. I have a compromised immune system and the kids are vaccinated. It happens we will be somewhere the kids make friends. I go talk to the parents about setting up a playdate and find out they don't vaccinate, can't risk my health. I feel so bad for unvaccinated children, it's not their fault but they will deal with so many consequences. My dad never allowed me to sleep over at my friend's house. He said that my friend's dad looked like a peophile. He was. My dad may have been passed out drunk pretty much all of the time, but he also always tried to be the best dad he could to me. It didn't work all the time, but god bless him. He tried. I only allow sleepovers with close family and friends due to my childhood. But, assuming that was not the case, the girl next door asked for a sleepover. She was maybe 8, and my daughter was 6. This was about 6 months ago. The first time the girl came over to play, she told me to put my macaw in his cage where he belongs because birds should be in cages and she didn't like him. I told her she could go back outside if she didn't want to be near him, but I would not lock him up. She also informed me that she was going to need me to make her dinner, right now, because she was hungry. It was not even 4pm and she had not been invited for dinner. She was extremely demanding and disrespectful. She complained about the snack I gave her even. When the girls went to play outside, she made my daughter cry 3 times in maybe 40 minutes. This was the first and only time she was allowed to play with my daughter. When I told her it was time for her to go home. She asked to spend the night. I told her no. Then she informed me that her parents, who I have never met, had already said my daughter could spend the night with her. I again said no. She demanded to know why. And I told her that I would have had to know her family personally for several years before I would entrust my daughter with them. I left out the part where she was extremely disrespectful. And obviously had no discipline and had never been told no in her life. Not that it made a difference. But my daughter is high functioning autistic, so if something were to happen that she did not have the emotional or verbal skills to tell me about, I would never know. I have told the girl no every time since that she asked to play with my daughter. 9 times out of 10 it's because I don't trust the friend's parents. I had neighbors recently that would train their kids to claim other people's kids did something. That is, broke a TV. That was already broke. ETC. To try to get money put on them. Some parents will claim their kid said something happened just to start drama. Like that your kid touched their privates or something. There are a lot of sick and manipulative people out there. I was that kid that wasn't allowed near my friend. He had started getting into drugs and other stuff a year before then he tried to commit suicide at 17 and his parents didn't know which of his friends were the bad element so they cut everyone off. He was one of my closest friends but I understood the parents decision. I never did see him again after that. I saw on Facebook years later he had joined the military and was deployed to Iraq. I haven't checked up on him in 10 years or so. Hope he's okay. Miss your Chris. My closest friends were all allowed to spend the night, but it was so difficult, if not impossible, to get a lot of other school friends to spend the night. Excuse after excuse would come each time I'd invite them. But I was always invited to come stay at their house instead. When I got quite a bit older one of the guys finally admitted that it was because my mom was a lesbian and their parents weren't comfortable with them being over there. Texas in the 90s. It never occurred to me one single bit when I was younger though and suddenly a lot of that made sense. So when I was a kid before contouring and highlighting and all the crazy makeup kids put on to just go to high school was around. My mom said I couldn't hang out with this girl Amy because she wore black eyeliner and only s wear black eyeliner. I rallied. Told her she can't judge a person based on eyeliner. I mean, that's freaking insane. After 28 years of best friendship, Amy started sending nudes to my dipshit husband. Mom was right. I should have listened to her back in 1990. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
bye for now.